Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. Samuel chapter 1, verse 1, we will read until verse 11. The Bible says, Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim, Zophim, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elikana, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Suf, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from the city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. As the two sons of Elihophni and Phineas, the priests of the Lord were there. And whenever the time came for Elikana to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he will give a double portion. For he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival, like the co-wife, also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, the husband, her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after they had finished eating. Remember, she was not eating. And drinking in Shiloh, now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this awesome word. Reveal it to us and help us understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me read for you verse 12. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hauna spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from, your, from you. 
But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken until now. Verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked him. And she said, let your maid servant find favor in your sight, so that women went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have entitled the message of today, your challenges. Your challenges. We were reading about a man who has two wives. The other, other one was blessed with children. The other one, Hannah, was not having children. And now this problem was a serious one to Hannah because her rival or her co-wife always spoke bad about her. But there is something that I want you to check where we have read. The Bible says, for the Lord closed a womb. Can you tell the person that is close to you, the Lord closed a womb. In other words, Hannah was not having children, not because she cannot produce. Hannah was not having children. Not because she cannot come with a plan that can make her have children. Anna was barren, not because she wanted to be barren. Anna was barren because God wanted her to be barren. Hallelujah. So now the Bible says always they will go to the temple to go and give. Now when they go and give, their husband will give to the other wife. Offerings and offerings to the children also. Now when he comes to Anna, he will give her double portion. Why? Because she didn't have any child. Now it happened after offering or giving the offerings that they had to go sit down and eat. The Bible explained that when they were eating, Anna was not eating. Anna was not drinking. Why? Because his heart was heavy. His heart was sorrowful. Can someone say hallelujah? Hannah was not drinking because she had a serious challenge. There was a challenge that was a problem to her. She cannot go associate with other women. She cannot go to places where other women are going. Why? Because she does not have a child. Always the co-wife who was supposed maybe to encourage her is the one that will be speaking bad words against him. This was a very serious problem or challenge to the life of Hannah. Hannah could not live a free life. Why? Because Everybody rejected her. Everybody didn't want to associate with her. The problem was she was not having children. Hallelujah. Now in these days that we are living in, children of God, each and every one of us here, we've got challenges. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have a challenge? Ask again, do you have a challenge? And what is he or she saying? If you don't have a challenge, I don't believe you were supposed to be here today. You are here because you have a challenge. And you want God to solve this challenge for you. Now when we have read, it has said it so nicely and good. The Bible says, God closed the womb of Hannah. 
who knows for you not to get the job is because god has closed the doors of your job who knows for you not to get money is because god has closed the doors of you having money now these challenges that we are having as children of god the first thing that challenges does to the life of a person it separate the person with other people some of us here we don't have money we don't even go to places where people who have money go am i right some of us here we are ladies we don't have children we are even afraid to associate with women who have got children why because they will speak of our barrenness others here there are things that we are crying unto the lord the lord to give us god is not giving them unto us now we are even afraid to associate with other people why because we don't have the kind of things that others are having but today i want to talk to you preferring or speaking closely looking at the challenge that you have in your life when you have a challenge in your life number 1 this challenge is asking you how much do you trust god when you have a challenge, number two, this challenge is asking you, do you believe in God? Number three, when you have a challenge, this challenge is asking you, do you have faith in God? If these three things are found, it means now God has a purpose of whatever that is happening in your life right now. If indeed truly you are trusting in the Lord, if indeed truly you are believing in the Lord, if indeed truly you have faith in the Lord, it means the challenge that you are having right now is making you to learn something and to have faith more. We can never have what God has promised to us until what we are searching for we have the kind of faith that is equal to what we are searching for. That is why you will find us when God blesses us, we slide away and we go back to our own sin. Now God will make us wait. Look at this woman. This woman, it means it's long she was married because the Bible is speaking about Benina having daughters and sons. And this lady was just seated in the house. And now when this lady was just seated in the house, until one day, she recognized that she has to do something. Can you tell the person that is close to do something? If you can listen to Hannah, we don't hear the word saying, Hannah ran to the house of the Lord. After offering and giving, after eating and doing everything, she never ate. I believe she was saying in her heart, today is today. When we have finished enjoying ourselves, I'm going to bow down before the altar of the Lord. The Lord must hear me today. I've been in this challenge for long. God must do something about my situation today. The Bible says, Anna went to the altar and knelt down. Started crying to the Lord. And when she was praying, nobody was hearing what Hannah was saying. In other words, the Bible says the mouth was just moving, but no voice was coming out. Until the chief priest thought, she's drunk. And he went to her to ask, why don't you go home because now you are drunk? Come back maybe after a day or two. You will be in your own self. And then come and tell the Lord what you are crying for. And Hannah answered the chief priest and said, No, I'm not drunk, my Lord. The issue is I have a challenge. Can you tell the person that is close to you? I have a challenge. This challenge has been making me not to be free. When I am with other people. This challenge is making me not to enjoy life. When other people are enjoying their lives. This challenge is making me not to understand myself. 
Many of us here, we are gathered here today to, and we are saying in our hearts, I've went to school, I have three degrees, but even though it's like that, I'm not finding my job. I am not finding what I'm searching for. That is a challenge that is upon your life. Hallelujah. This is a challenge that is troubling your life. Now when we look at this space or at this piece in the Bible that we have read, the Bible says Hannah went to the altar, knelt down. Remember the altar of God is where the presence of God is. Now when he was kneeling, she was kneeling at the altar. She was telling God direct, God look at me, remember me, your maid servant. If you can just give me one, one, God, I will be very happy. This lady was trying to show to us that her grief was already too much. Can you ask the person that is close to you, how much is your too much of challenge? Now, because God closed the womb of this, of this woman, her challenge was too much. She was rejected. She was dejected. Nobody wanted to associate with her, even in the life of today where we are living. People reject us because we have problems, isn't it? Friends are too much. Galo. But the day you come back in the afternoon and they ask you what happened and you say, Ish. they say the job was temporal, now it's finished. You will never see a friend again close to you. Why? Because people associate with you because of the things that you have. If you don't have anything when you are still in the midst of challenges, you, people don't want to associate with you. So now as Christians, we must be very careful whom we associate ourselves with. Can you tell the person that is close to you, be careful? Okay. Now Hannah, after praying, there's something that happened to, to her. Her focus changed. When you have a challenge, your focus must change towards the solution of the challenge. Look at what happened to Hannah. The same year, the same following year next time when she came back, she was having a son and the son was called Samuel. In other words, this is telling us as children of God, some of the challenges that we have are taking very much long because what is supposed to come out of us must be very big. Are you hearing me? Don't worry when you see others just crying two days and uh, uh, those things they have. Small. They are very small. The other challenges that we are having, some will tell me, Mama, I've been here for 10 years. Yes, it's good for you because what you are going to give birth of is going to shake the world. It's going to amaze everybody. People are going to ask what's happening because of what is going to come out of that challenge. When you are taking long in a challenge, it means where you are going is very big. Hallelujah. Now when Hannah got a son, he came with the son the same time he was told. And when he came with the son, he went to offer the son as she has said. That's when we start hearing about prophet Samuel. But this one of Hannah, because she has waited and waited and waited for many years. When the result came, a prophet came forth. Are you hearing me? Now it means in your life, 
in the challenges that you are meeting right now, something big is going to come out of you. As long as you relax in the presence of God, as long as you allow the Spirit of God to lead you, as long as you listen to what the Word of God is saying, whatever that is going to come out of you, it will be big, it will be great. Are you hearing me? Now, most of us, we are falling during the time of challenges because our expectations are not right. Things that come very fast, they end very fast. Now, if you can just look at the life of this prophet somewhere, he was the biggest prophet. Stayed in the house of the chief priest, learning the do's and don'ts of the house of the Lord. And when time came, God started speaking with him. If you can look at Samuel, nobody taught him how God spoke with people. He was asleep. And he heard somebody calling. He woke up, went to his master. Master, you are calling me. And the master said, no, I didn't call you. Go back and sleep, my son. And he went and sleep. And God called again. He woke up and ran, Master, you called me. No, 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 I didn't call you. Go and sleep. The Bible said, then Eli remembered and recognized, no, man, this boy. Remember, this boy is a gift, eh? Now, because now this boy is a gift, Eli started thinking, mm -mm, something must be happening with this boy. Now, my boy, when somebody calls you again, repent, cry and say, here I am, my Lord, speak. I am listening. Hallelujah. Now when God came again for the third time to call on Samuel, Samuel answered and said, God, here I am, Lord, speak. I'm listening. I believe by then Samuel was already of age. Now remember, from birth, this boy is living in the house of Eli, the chief priest. He doesn't even know why he is there. Only God knows why Samuel was there in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, Vanaba Eli were no longer living according to the laws of the Lord. So God allowed Hannah to bring Samuel so that Samuel can come and replace those boys. Are you hearing me? Now the challenge that you are in today might be predicting and telling you that child of God, stop worrying because that challenge that you are in, you are still learning how to do things in the house of God. Samuel was learning. Uh-uh. God has already seen that this boy now is right. Are you here? God has already recognized that this boy now is fine. Now because this boy has been in this house for this long, doing whatever he was doing in the house of the Lord, then God came down and spoke with him. And when God spoke with him, the name prophet fell on him. When the name prophet fell on him, another will stand amongst women and say, I have a son. My son is a prophet of Israel. My son communicates with God. My son hears from the Lord. My son is the one who brings us messages from God. Are you hearing me? Now we, now we, when we start to have challenges, we don't have focus. The challenge that you are having right now, it is because God wants to still make you to learn. Hmm? God wants you to do what? We are failing most of the time, children of God, because we don't understand the do's and don'ts of Christianity. God blesses us today, tomorrow we go back to our sin. Why? Because Now, if you come and sit in the house of the Lord, 
And God allowed you to stay. Let me tell you today. God is allowing you to stay with the disease that you are having. So that he can first penal beat you. And make you a beautiful lady that you are supposed to be. That by the day when he heals you. Everyone will recognize and know. That you have been healed in the name of Jesus. That you have been washed by the blood of Jesus. That something beautiful has happened in you. The challenge that you are having right now does not mean it's over with you. If you are indeed a Christian, the challenge that you are having is a step for you to learn more and more about God. When we come to the house of the Lord every day, we find the man of God preaching. When you are a Christian, you must do this, you must do this. Read the Bible. You must pray. You must do this, you must do this. When you are going on doing this and this and that, great things are going to happen in your life. Are you hearing me? Can you ask the person that is, what are you doing with your challenge? When you are having with a challenge we have had, you must focus. That's number one. Number two, you must pray. When we pray according to the word of the Lord, demons that are always close to us, they run away. Whatever we are seeing in our bodies, we have been healed already. Remember the Bible says, by his stripes we have been healed. Immediately you come into the house of the Lord you are prayed for in Jesus' name. You have been healed already. Those things that you are seeing in your body, it over mercy and I the challenge that you are having today, you need to stay much longer so that what you are searching for must come. The longer the time, the bigger the results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can go and read, you can read it at home. In the book of Job chapter 30. Job. You will read the 9 to 16. I just want us to read verse 16 only. Job was afflicted by a sickness, remember? Hallelujah. It says, and now my soul is poured out because of my blight. The day of days of affliction take hold of me. Job was having a challenge, remember? The story of Job. The devil went to God and asked, first one that we have heard, God closed the womb so that a prophet must come. Now here, the devil went up and asked for Job. Just give me him so that I can tempt him and see if he is not going to, 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 to reject you. He's God. He's not going to scorn you. He's not going to leave you. God allowed the devil to go to Job. Now Job there where we are reading is speaking about the problem and the challenge that he's having. People are no longer speaking with, they no longer see him as an important person. Initially Job was very rich, now he's very poor. He even says, stays where the ashes are so that he can be able to scratch himself. Every friend that comes to him will always say, Job, go and confess your sins. Why? Because of the challenge that Job was having. Now you read the whole book of Job, he's speaking about the problems that Job was having. Even the wife said to him, Just insult this God and die, you as good as, good as nothing. You are very sick. And said, Job, oh, must I bless the Lord when things are good? And when they are bad, must I curse the Lord? That I want to do. Now, this challenge that was in Job's life made Job to be more stronger. Hmm? Even when friends were coming to him, Job was strong. They say whatever they say, but Job was strong. Job knows he has never done anything wrong. Maybe God is allowing everything to happen to him because of a certain purpose. But the Bible says unto us, when God remembered Job, 
Job was blessed two times more than the way he was blessed. Why? Because God is the one who allowed all to happen to him. Every challenge that comes to our lives is searching for our faith in God. That challenge wants you to have that verse. I'm going to church today. Even if I have flu, but this flu will see me in church. Now, the Lord wants us to be focused Christians who pray and who knows the kind of God they are serving. When you don't know the kind of God you are serving, when your friends come to tell you one, two, three, four, you deviate from the way and you start doing other things. But if you know the kind of God you are serving, when your friends come say, you need to just look at yourself, you just said, no, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my God lives. At this right time, he's going to remember me. At this right time, God is going to lift me up. The longer your challenge is taking in your life, if you are staying in the way of the Lord, doing what God wants you to do, I am prophesying today, if you are doing that, the progress that is going to come in your life will be very much great and big. Why? Because you have been there because God allowed it. I am walking according. The challenge that you have, the longer it takes, that's what I've seen the word of God. The longer your challenge is taking, it means the bigger the miracle that is coming. If right now you are searching for a job, you are speaking a lot of things, please, from today, don't worry anymore. It is just a challenge that has come your way. Now, because this challenge has come your way, have words to answer those that are going to ask you about your challenge. In other words, if you are waiting for big things, also be patient and wait upon the Lord. Rely on him, trust him, believe in him, have faith in him. It shall surely come to pass. Don't be moved by things, small things that are happening, be happening beside you. Now the challenge that you are having, my son, my daughter, let me tell you, it is just a step forward of going where you are supposed to go. You are being arranged by the word of God. And when you are being arranged, your faith goes up. When your faith goes up, you forget that you have got back pain. When you are here in the house of the Lord, when you hear the word of the Lord, you even forget that your legs are painful. Why? Because you are in the presence of God Almighty. And God Almighty has got big plans for your life. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah? Now in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, it says looking unto Jesus. Hebrews 12 2. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down now at the right hand of the throne of God. Reinamapulus, are we as Christians? We take our eyes, we look unto Jesus. Who because there was joy, there was salvation. That was supposed to happen through him. He neglected the issue of shame and pains and everything and humiliation. Why? Because he knew there was joy there at the front. And after he faced the cross, me and you were born. Now we are able to stand because Jesus endured his own challenge. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you enduring your challenge? Are you enduring your challenge in faith? Remember, when you are enduring in faith, you don't speak anyhow. Because when you start speaking anyhow, you go two, two steps back. Don't get tired.
tired because of people who are rejecting you. Don't get tired because of the things that people are saying. Have faith, trust, and believe in him. You know, the only thing that activated God to give Hannah a son is because he was focused. He went to pray and said, God, if only. If only, and God said, it's time. My daughter, I heard you, it's time. I have to bless you. And when he blesses her, a prophet was born. When Job went to God and said, God, now they've rejected me. I'm afflicted. Now I stay even in the dustbin. My friends are always telling me, you are wrong. You have sinned. You are wrong. You must go and confess. God, can you do something about my situation? The Bible says when God remembered John, the blessed Job, the blessings that were upon Job's life were double the blessings that he was having before. Why? Because people saw him. Can you tell the person this close to you? People are seeing you when you are going to church. And they are also speaking about you. So now can you be patient and wait? Hallelujah. When we wait, we are trying to be like our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Savior endured the cross so that me and you can be born. He didn't look at the things that people were saying. Some will say, all hail king of the Jews. Whereas they know that he was going to the cross. Some will say whatever they are saying. Some will clap them. The Bible says so. And they will ask him, who clapped you? Because they heard he was a prophet. But he didn't answer anything. He endured the cross because of the joy that was before. Hallelujah. Now can you tell the person that is, can you endure this little challenge? Can you endure this little problem that you have right now? Because where God is taking you is very much big. Hallelujah. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. It says no temptation has overtaken you except such as is. Come on to men. Can I repeat it? No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to men. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will also provide, make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. The Bible says the temptations that we are having right now, they have happened before. Can you tell the person that is, what you are seeing now, somebody has gone through this. Nkele you know, the pain of the leg and the backbone and cancer and whatever and whatever. Somebody went through this thing before. All the problems and the challenges that we meet as children of God, somebody went through them before. The only thing that we have to do is to hold on and have faith in God. If God has made that one to come out, he will make me to come out. If it is happening in America that people are being healed, those that cannot walk, it means one day even to me it's going to happen. If it is by the name of Jesus. If something is happening in Venda where I come from, in the name of Jesus and myself right now I have this problem. It means someday it's going to happen to me again also in Jesus' name. The only issue that is needed, faith, focus, Believe and trust in the Lord. Remember, I told you before, the longer the problem and the time, the bigger the destiny.
keep watching Charis TV.